Top 10 of the weirdest NFL injuries of all time. Sports can't be technically called sports without injuries, right? And NFL players are sometimes famous for their weird injuries. While the word injury should be terrific, some of the stories we're going to talk about today are actually more fun than terrific. Well, it's time to throw that black humor away and get started on the vid. Hey everybody, welcome to Everything Sports. Make sure that you stay until the very end because you definitely don't want to miss the story of a man for whom there is absolutely no light at the end of the tunnel. If you want to know what we're talking about, then you will find out once we reach the number one spot on our list. Number 10, Chris Hansen. Back in 2003, rookie coach Jack Del Rio placed a stump of oak and an ax in the Jacksonville Jaguars locker room as a motivational technique, symbolic of his theme to keep chopping wood. But was that a good decision? Not so great. Players all took a hack at the stump, and then it was punter Chris Hansen's turn. Swinging the ax and missing, Hansen hit himself and gashed his right leg and ended up leaving blood over the locker room and ending his season. As it turns out, the injury was severe enough that he needed surgery to close up a gash on his right non-kicking leg. Mike Perkins, the director of football technology and facilities who purchased the ax and found the stump at head coach Jack Del Rio's request, kept it in his office, and it remains there to this day. It's like a historical monument. Number nine. Jason Pierre-Paul Although the 4th of July is a day of celebration for most Americans, the holiday holds a different significance for Pierre-Paul. In 2015, he had a serious hand injury in a fireworks accident, changing the course of his life and career forever. He had purchased $1,100 worth of fireworks, and the festivals took a turn for the worse. While doctors were able to save his hand, Pierre Paul ended up staying more than two weeks in the hospital. He couldn't avoid multiple surgeries and lost his right index finger. Number 8. Bill Gramatica Field Gold Celebration And as they always say, celebrating excessively makes you a big loser. And if you don't believe it, make sure to check out our video about early celebrations. But what about Bill Gramatica's case? Arizona Cardinals Bill Gramatica hyperextended his right knee jumping in the air to celebrate a first quarter field goal against the New York Giants. After making a 42-yard field goal into a stiff breeze, Gramatica ran toward the Cardinals bench, jumped, and pumped his fist. When the rookie landed, he started limping on his right leg, his plant leg on kicks. Quote, my jump was excellent. It was my landing I needed to work on. It was funny. It was part of my career. I talk about it all the time. You have to laugh about it, he ended up saying. Actually, he was never the same after the injury, going from making 16 out of 20 field goals his rookie year to being out of the NFL three years later. Number 7. Gus Farrow. Do you remember one of the wackiest moments in the NFL which happened in front of a national audience? On November 23, 1997, in a Sunday night football showdown against the NFC East rival New York Giants, the Washington Redskins found themselves in a scoreless tie. On third and goal from the one-yard line, Redskins quarterback Gus Ferrotti rolled out and found his way into the end zone to put the Redskins up front. While cheering, though, he ended up headbutting a padded cement wall, spraining his neck. He managed to get back on the field, completing two of his four passes, but the pain worsened as the game continued to go on and he wound up going into the local hospital. Number 6. Owen Schmidt During the Seattle Seahawks Jacksonville Jaguars pregame player announcements, Owen Schmidt wanted to get himself fired up and ready. And what did he do? Well, he decided to do that by smashing his helmet into his head repeatedly. The resulting images showed Schmidt wandering the sidelines with blood pouring down his face. The helmet smashing ended up leaving a nice gash on his forehead, which required stitches to close. While he did still play the entirety of the game, his bloodstained jersey was a reminder of his pregame insanity. Number 5. Derek Mason 
Believe it or not, NFL player Derek Mason didn't get injured from playing out there on the gridiron, but in fact, ended up getting hurt while playing golf of all things. In May of 2003, at a charity golf event, Derek Mason ended up breaking his right hand while teeing off. He was using a driver off the tee when he hit behind the ball and into the ground. The hand started to swell immediately, and he knew he had done something wrong. The injury occurred while Mason was taking part in a big charity weekend for the Titans, and his x-ray on the hand revealed that the third bone in the hand was completely fractured. Mason jokingly told the papers, quote, I've been telling people I was rescuing my dog or something, and I slept and fell. I could see getting hurt in other sports, but not that one. Hey, things happen. It was just bad luck. Now, before we continue, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. And also, don't forget to turn on post notifications so you never miss a video from us. Number four, Kendall Simons. Pittsburgh Steelers offensive lineman Kendall Simons struggled with injuries throughout his career. He was all too familiar with the trainer's table during his playing career, although most of the injuries weren't his fault. But of all the injuries he had suffered in his career, none were stranger than what had happened to him in 2006. Actually, this one is just great and odd. Pittsburgh started the 2006 season 1-3 after a loss to the San Diego Chargers and the Steelers' third straight defeat. Simons wanted to end up spending his Monday night watching a Monday night football game between the Denver Broncos and Baltimore Ravens. And while enjoying the Bronx victory, he fell asleep with a cooling device on his left foot. And guess what happened? He ended up waking with frostbite on his foot and heel. The injury caused him to miss the next game in hopes his wound didn't worsen. And the loss of Simons, unfortunately, made Pittsburgh's desperate situation even worse. Number three, Chase Blackburn. In case you haven't heard about it, we mustn't miss the case of Chase Blackburn in the locker room after the Giants' 16-3 victory over the Philadelphia Eagles. It seems Blackburn was tending to some personal hygiene, clearing his ear with a Q-tip, when a member of the media ran past him in a crowded locker room bumping into his arm and projecting the swab right into his ear canal, nearly punctuating his eardrum and causing extensive bleeding. His hearing was affected, but doctors did inform him that it would return to normal once the blood dissipated. Well, we can really use this fact as a friendly reminder to keep the Q-tip process as safe as possible. Number two, Lamar Houston. If we jump back into the 2014 NFL season, it would be hard to ignore Houston's injury. Lamar Houston was injured attempting to celebrate after sacking New England Patriots quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo in the fourth quarter of the Bears' 51-23 loss. Jumping in the air, Houston landed awkwardly on his right knee and went straight to the turf. It appeared as if he would be okay after being picked up by a teammate, but as soon as he realized he couldn't put weight on that leg, he was ended up being carried off the field. He said, quote, I probably shouldn't have celebrated like that, but it happens. It was actually Houston's first sack of the year after signing a $35 million contract in the offseason. Lastly, number one, Orlando Brown. On December 19th, 1999, there was a dark day looming for the NFL and the Cleveland Browns especially. Offensive tackle Orlando Brown was hit in the eye by a flag which was thrown by referee Jeff Tribble in a game against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jeff instantly tried to apologize to Brown, who then went ballistic and shoved Triple to the ground. The lineman was immediately ejected from the game and suspended by the NFL. The massive lineman suffered the loss of vision and damage to his right eye. The injury itself didn't heal and ended up missing three seasons because of that. Cleveland President Carmen Policy said the Browns decided to release Brown, who had been on the physically unable to perform list, after team doctors told them that there was no significant improvement in the player's eye. Quote, We are convinced that there is absolutely no light at the end of the tunnel in terms of Orlando returning to the playing field in 2000. So, which of these stories was the weirdest that you've ever heard? Let us know in the comment section down below, and also don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video, guys, and thanks for watching.